I go to Gage Park High School. Percy L. Julian High Roberto School. Clemente High School. George Westinghouse College. I'm a Chicago Public Schools parent. Fifth grader in the system now. I have twin boys at the Vorex School. And I have a 60 year old son at Crank School. I'll, I'm entering my 10th year of teaching at CPS. Middle school teacher. I'm an art teacher. Paraprofessional and school related personnel. President of the Chicago Teachers Union. Uh, I love this, the students, uh, they're really great. Uh, it's funny because when I meet people and we get to talking about what we do for a living, when they find out that I'm a middle school teacher, I almost always get the response, oh my God, you must have a lot of patience. And though it's true, uh, you got have to have patience to teach you know, kids who are 11, 12, 13 years old. It's not as rough as it seems. The vast majority of the kids that I teach are, are wonderful and they're respectful and they're kind and they're polite. Sure, you have some kids who are a little bit more difficult than others, but, but overall, they're, they're wonderful kids. Teachers do more than just work in a classroom. They go beyond what they have to do. I think some students do look at teachers as role models because many of us don't have that role model. You know, teaching here in Chicago, you know, we work with children who have um, some very difficult lives. And, you know, what makes our tasks as educators a little challenging is trying to work through those challenges with those students with a limited resource. On the west side, I feel like the, um, the resources are not there and everybody seems to say that um, they're getting the best education. To me, they're not because I've had CPS education and I know they can be better. Uh, but I've been around the city and been to enough schools where I realized that what my kids are receiving is way ahead of the curve. Uh, my kids have science labs, libraries, uh, they've had art classes, things that uh, are hard to come by in a lot of parts of town. It's just sad, it makes me sad to think about how students are treated and how like there's this idea that like yeah we'll, we'll say you're worth it but in terms of getting the resources to let you know that you're worth it, to let you know that you do have a space in society, that doesn't really happen. There's a, a sharp inequity in terms of the way resources are uh, allocated around the city and schools with a high concentration of poor black and brown kids are not enjoying the, the same types of things that you'll find in other parts of the city. They tell us as the parents that it's because of the cuts and they don't have the funds so they have to cut teachers. My kids have not had the uh, basic things uh, on a regular basis that I had when I was a kid. Uh, my soon to be fifth grader has not yet had a, a music class. And despite being in one of the best schools in the city of Chicago, indeed one of the best schools in the state, there's no music feature. Students want the opportunity to be fully engaged in a way that um, supersedes any sort of bubble sheet. Um, students are by design and naturally creative. You know, so what they're going to want, they're going to want to see a classroom that allows for arts and music to be incorporated. Um, not as this ancillary opportunity, but as an intricate part to their overall development. It, it, the art class or the music class or, or being in a play, that, that can be the reason the kid wants to come to school. If you look at the research, art, music, PE, all hardwire you for science, believe it or not, and mathematics. Music is all about patterns, and so is math. Once you start recognizing patterns and you can use that for a variety of ways, then it'll make math so much easier and so much accessible to students. In addition, art allows students to express themselves. One of the things that we find that's so unfortunate is that many of our children live what we would consider unimaginable lives, and art allows them a way to express themselves. I think a lot of people like the arts, but they think it's fluff. Um, the troubled child should have this, the one who wants to be an artist should have this, but everybody else, it doesn't make sense to have it. They want people to be able to be good in math and science. They don't realize that it's not just a matter of repeating the same formulas over and over again, it's a matter of creativity, rethinking a math issue, rethinking a scientific issue. That only happens when creativity is fostered. More books. I know that sounds like really, but I would want to have more books because at Julian we didn't even have textbooks like in some classes. Well, even though I can use the textbooks uh, that were published in 1997, um, you know it'd be fantastic to you know have a textbook that shows that Bill Clinton wasn't the last president. I have a friend who taught second grade for many years, never had air conditioning. 
How can she begin to concentrate on teaching her children when all she could do was trying to keep her children awake because it was so darn hot? Um, they, were, they were melting. These poor little kids had no air conditioning. AC in part of the school and in the other part of the school, it was just like, what is going on? It's the same thing for the heat. We had heat in one part of the school, and then in the other part of the school there was no heat, and so like we were being tortured. It's like my freshman year for gym, we had two classes in there because there wasn't enough PE teachers, and there was about probably like I would say maybe 40, 50 students in that class. You got all these oversized classrooms, so it's kind of hard with see like the teacher do more discipline than teaching. When I was coming up, we had teacher assistants, so now they don't have that. When the teacher is teaching and she has a, a classroom of more children than she should have, a teacher assistant needs to be in there. If class size is not going to be lowered, at least put a teacher assistant in there. I've had anywhere from 28 to 35 children, and it gets a little difficult. I don't know what studies people say that says it doesn't make a bit of difference when you put more children in the room. But when you have, for instance, a third of your children with special needs who need your attention, who are required legally to, to have documentation, um, to treat them individually, to pay attention to them, and now you have 35 children children and now um, there's the possibility that there could be 50 children. But we live in a, a city right now where the head of Chicago Public Schools claims that there is no correlation between reduced class size and improved educational outcomes. Now every parent, every teacher, and indeed Mr. Emanuel and his Board of Education knows that's not the case. It, it defies logic to suggest that a teacher is gonna do as good a job uh, passing information along to kids, teaching them, when they've got 32 kids in a class versus 17 or 18. And that's why the schools where the, the, the uh, Folks who can do it, uh, send their kids to Latin, to Parker, to the University of Chicago Lab School. They're sending their kids to schools where class sizes are 16, 17, 18, 20 kids. They, they understand. On the west side, they've closed one, two, three schools. And now the parents are basically transferring them over to my son's school, which is making the class go up and up and up. One of the problems we're seeing with this, this push to just shut down schools, uh, and frequently to, to turn them around, turn them over to folks, uh, is that it destabilizes neighborhoods. We've seen some of these schools turned over and turned over year after year. Crane High School, they wanted to um, turn it around and they wanted my son to travel over to a different territory and area that would be very dangerous for him. So I was very angry about that and I didn't like it at all. I mean it happens all the time because students have to travel a longer distance than what they would normally have to. So you know they come across different neighborhoods, different boundaries, different people and of course there's conflict because people are like this is an outsider, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. Usually, most people fear what they don't understand or what they don't know. So, when different people go to different neighborhoods and no one is familiar with you, they may fear you or they may have a certain feeling that they can't explain. From not being able to explain this feeling is a possibility it could lead to violence. Well, I was originally supposed to be placed at Julian High School, but my counselor sent my information to Finger High School because that's not it. No, I didn't know him, but he was killed around the corner from my house. In reality, I noticed like the amount of violence that was going on in my neighborhood, and it could have been me because that's the route that I used to come home. I would probably be in shock if my school closed down tomorrow. And I believe that when a school is closed down, it can make somebody feel like you're giving up on them, like you feel like they're not worth the time and effort. Nobody wants to feel that way because if nobody has faith in you, sometimes you don't know how to have faith in yourself. Chicago Teachers Union has taken a righteous stance. Um, and I say that because just quite frankly, as uh, a black teacher, knowing that the idea of public education was birthed out of my ancestors. And to think that now the very folks that conceived the idea 
of public education is now being denied. Um, that is an affront uh, to, to who we are. They only focus on students who they think will succeed in the world. Like, I don't think that's right because, like, just because I'm, I, come, I come from a poor family doesn't mean I don't have what it takes to become successful. You know, the Board of Education uh, is composed of people with lots of money and people that don't have backgrounds in education. So, yes, I question what their motives are. I hate to be negative, <laughs> but I feel that the board is run by corporations. That the, that the mayor, that the board of education are thinking only about money and who can get money because we have to still put money toward education. We, we know that that's part of an, a huge budget, but it seems like the, the corporations want their cut. And so if you have charter schools, for instance, you can be assured that corporations are gonna get their cut. And because there's no oversight, like a local school council, there's no way to ensure that the, the money is going toward the children, toward the program, to the children in the classrooms, that there isn't going to be enough textbooks. There's no oversight. So where is, all, who's, what, where is the oversight for all the public money that's being spent toward education? That's the question. I think they're fighting to uh, slash payroll. And I think this isn't just happening in Chicago. A push for charter schools, let's not forget, is a push for a cheaper labor force because the vast majority of charter schools in Chicago are not unionized. The vast majority of charter schools in Chicago have a high turnover rate, which means the teachers they're cycling in are younger, cheaper teachers. So if we can increase the number of charters around the city, we're going to reduce the, the cost of, of teachers. So in a time when we are looking to slash line items, uh, increasing charters, uh, role in Chicago education uh, is, is one way to do it. Well, there's no doubt about it that we're standing for children because the schools that Chicago's children deserve are not what we have right now. And we all agree with that. But the key is that when we come together as parents, communities, students, and teachers, paraprofessionals, and clinicians, then we can get a lot of good work done. You may find a teacher assistant or school clerk or SCR or guidance counselor who's been at this school 25 years. I, I just cannot see a school operating without any uh, support staff like paraprofessionals. So what we want to do is show what are wonderful things that could be happening that aren't and the things that are good, we need to really focus on that and, mar and actually pull those out as best practices. So the keys are we have quite a few schools that are doing extremely well, even neighborhood schools that people have sort of neglected over the years. People have found a way, but they also have very, very strong local school councils, which means parents are involved, teachers are involved, communities are involved, paraprofessionals are involved. And until we understand that all of Chicago benefits from a strong public school system, then people who have not been involved to this point need to really step up. I would like to see you know, a system that's inclusive to families, communities, and most of all, of course, our children, that allows those voices to dictate ultimately uh, what, what they need. In Chicago right now, we allow corporations to define what reform is, and we really don't ask the people who know about it. We don't ask um, the PhD professors who've been studying education, who teach teachers. We don't talk to the teachers in the classroom. But I think we can do this because I think we're at this cusp right now where we are making a change, where finally people are beginning to realize how important the arts are in school. And I'm not saying this just because I'm an art teacher. I'm saying this because we have to look at our children as whole human beings. Could you imagine a world where, you know, students could be properly assessed based on their talents? 
um, art and music and physical education really being used as a way to champion a child's full development. I, I think it would be beneficial for the mayor when he decides to roll out a new program for Chicago public school kids to ask whether this is something that would fly at the University of Chicago Lab School where he sends his kid. Is this the type of reform that parents at the lab school would accept? And I think if he uses that as a litmus test, he's going to find that a lot of what he's suggesting isn't going to fly, isn't going to pass muster. If he could just put himself in the place of my sons and what they're doing to divert to his upbringing. My mom and my dad took it like the toolbox. Whether we need all the tools that's in the box, it really don't matter. They sell it as a set. So to me, whether they need the tools, I think they should give them all the tools of life so that they can go out there. If they should need them, they will have better to have and don't need it than need it and don't have it. And to me, I don't think our children have the right tools. And I think it should. So that's what I have to say to him.